I'm Julia, and this story happened to me when I was 13. My brother Zach was nine at the time, so it was one afternoon when my brother and I were home alone, and I suggested we play hide and seek while our parents were at work. So he decided he wanted to hide, so I counted until 50, and then said, ready or not, here I come. I checked the bathtub first, since he always loved hiding there. I peeked, but he wasn't there. That's strange, I thought to myself then proceeded to search the first entire floor of our house. And again, he wasn't there. I just brushed it off and went up to the second floor where he would occasionally hide on the second floor. But we have a very simple house layout and our parents' bedroom was right next to Zach's room. And my bedroom was right next to the main bathroom. Keep in mind, we don't have any storage rooms or a backyard or anything like that. We were strictly forbidden to go into the attic because my dad kept his personal things up there. If we ever hid on the second floor, he wouldn't have many places to hide because we know the second floor layout extremely well. I looked everywhere, in the bedrooms and even the second bathtub again, and he still wasn't there. At this point, I gave up looking for him and figured he would just emerge out of his hiding place. But something just didn't feel right in that moment. It had been more than 15 minutes since I gave up and I started to get a bit worried. But I thought maybe he finished hiding and was in his bedroom playing games right now. Around 30 minutes later, our parents returned home and my mom asked me to go call Zach for dinner. So I went to his room, but he wasn't there and I called out to him inside the entire house. My parents started to get worried and then I told my mom that we were playing hide and seek and that he went missing and I haven't been able to find him. My dad immediately called the police. Shortly after the police arrived, they searched the entire house. They weren't able to find him, unfortunately. All of us were shocked by the sudden disappearance. And the next morning, the police arrived again and searched the entire neighborhood. Then they couldn't find a single trace of my brother. At this point, we had all lost hope in finding him and decided the best thing to do was to move on with our lives. A few months later, we started experiencing very strange activity, from missing food to our TV being played on full volume in the middle of the night and our cat acting very strangely. These strange things continued for months. My dad got a promotion for his job and told us that we needed to move. So the next day, my dad asked me to go to the attic with him to clear up some things. It was at that time when a very strange odor hit us. It smells like it's coming from that suitcase in the corner, my dad shouted. We went over there, opened the suitcase, and found something that would haunt us for the rest of our lives. There he was, Zach, lying there rotting and being feasted on by maggots. I'm 28 now. His spirit and that memory of him in that suitcase still haunts me to this day. Even though I've moved on with my life, and I got married and gave birth to a beautiful boy. My son still talks about his uncle, which he will never see, and he won't stop attaching to me. I feel so sorry for him that he died in that way. He would have been 24 by now, probably married with kids. I blame myself all the time. Why didn't I check the attic?